In this video, I'm going to show you three different CVs and I'm going to show you like snippets from each throughout like my explanation of what you need to write in your CV. And those are CVs that I got interviews from at Rocket Lab, the European Space Agency and the company I work for now, which is Accenture. Good morning, fellow engineers. I'm currently chilling on my balcony. We all know that making a CV can be really challenging. And for me, I spent probably like the whole of my final year and also before that working on my CV and getting it reviewed at and changed it iterated upon like constantly i guess it takes some time to get a really good cv so i'm gonna condense what i learned from that process i'm um, gonna give you my tips on how to write a great cv but before that i'm gonna go back inside because it's like super cold out here so yeah i'll see you back inside so the first thing i think is really important to grasp is that a cv is there to in essence prove to a company that you're a really low risk employee. In essence, a company pays a lot to bring a new employee on board. So they want to ensure they're bringing the best person they can. And if you're able to get across on your CV that you are going to be a low risk employee, so someone who's not gonna leave straight away and also someone who's capable of what they want you to do, then you're pretty much sorted. So there are three main overall things that you want to really ensure your CV shows is that you wanna show that you're competent, you want to show that you have credibility, and you also want to show that you yourself align with the company's values. So when you're writing your CV, if you constantly think about the purpose of the CV, I think you're going to go down a really good track when you're forming out what to put in your CV. I bet you're still thinking, what what should I actually write in my CV? I'm guessing you're watching this video as a student who is looking to either apply for an internship or a graduate role. And if so, well, the main thing that you're going to have in your life right now is your education. And this has to be at the top of your CV. So if you see here on my Accenture CV and my European Space Agency CV, both CVs have my education listed as the first thing. So depending on the role that you're applying for, I think it's really important to list out some of the most relevant modules you've studied at university. So for example, my European Space Agency application had very different modules listed than what I listed for my Accenture application, purely because the industries are two very different areas. The next most important thing to put on your CV after your education will be any work experience, any project work, or any internships that you've done. I personally didn't do any internships or work experience related to engineering. However, I had a lot of university project related experience and that's what majority of my CV was filled with. So if we have a look at my ESA CV, you can see it's full of my experiences that are related to the role that I'm going to apply for. If you have a lot of experiences, then try and stick to only listing ones where you believe that the skills you've learned from that experience are going to be applicable for the, for the role that you're applying for. Don't really overload your CV because recruiters tend to only spend about six to eight seconds on each CV. So if you put a ton of information that's not relevant, they don't, they're just gonna bin it straight off the bat. It's a good idea to have the job description next to you when you're writing your CV because you want to ensure that you you pick on all the points that they've listed in the job description in terms of what skills they require and ensure that you're you're demonstrating how you've used those skills when writing about your experiences in your CV. Certifications, awards, and extracurricular activities. So these are things you can add to your CV to give a bit more emphasis in terms of what your interests are and also boost your credibility and demonstrate your competency. Again, don't overload it with every single achievement you've got because if we do that, I could have like a, a full on thick ass book with the swimming certificates I got as I was a child. And I don't think that's really relevant to anyone these days. Really stick to the most relevant certifications and extracurricular activities you've done for the role because like I said before, people don't spend long reading CVs so you wanna to get to the point pretty much. So if we have a look at my European Space Agency CV, I listed that I partook in the ESA Academy which is pretty well appropriate for this type of CV. But if we have a look at my Accenture CV, I've listed other extracurricular activities I did. And as you can see, I've not mentioned I did the ESA Academy thing because it's not relevant for the role that I was applying for. So a bonus thing you can add if you do have it is any publications that you're an author or co-author of. This is a recurring theme. Um, I'm gonna say it again because it's important. Only list your publication if it is relevant to the domain that you're applying for. So if you have a 
publication related to aerospace but are applying for software, they're not going to care really. So as you can see on my European Space Agency CV and my Rocket Lab CV, I have put the publication that I'm a co-author of. However, on my Accenture CV, I didn't mention it at all. Lastly, hobbies. I recommend listing two types of hobbies. One that actively demonstrates your, I guess, your mental capability. So for example, if you are applying to be a software engineer and you say you enjoy playing chess, it kind of suggests that you, you have a good sort of cre creative, logical thinking process, I guess, which helps in the software engineering field. The other hobby I recommend putting is something related to sports or health in that sense, because I think it's it might be important to suggest to the recruiter that you do like to take care of yourself and therefore are unlikely to get unfit and unhealthy and not be able to do the work that you need to do. Keep this section super short because you don't really want to go over the top with it because it's not part of your main CV, it's just there, just so they know a bit more about your personality. With this in mind, make sure you stick to just two pages at most for your CV and also make sure, my preference is just to have one column, it's just easier to read, it's just top to bottom instead of navigating different columns and sidebars and whatnot. So if you've learned something new, consider subscribing and also hit the like button and if you want to also check out why I decided to make the switch from aerospace to software. I do have a video about it, so do check that out. Great, see you in another video.